The third and final method of modeling is called solid modeling. Uh, this is extremely versatile, very powerful, uh, fast to create, but trickier to edit. Um, when you create a model with, with solids, it can actually generate quite large file sizes as well. So that has to be, be uh, you have to be a bit careful. You may find that uh, it's better to export in, in, in chunks and, uh, and then this will convert things to, to meshes. But anyway, let's show you the, the, the basic command. The, the, the prime command that you would use for, for solids is to extrude. And you'll find it here, identified on the ribbon. If you pick the shape and return, and you see we're getting a box type affair already. And if I just extrude that by 3000, I've got a solid box. Okay, top and bottom are there already. Now I can still edit the, the original shape to, to a degree, okay, but I can't lift it up. It won't let me lift it up. It'll let me move it on plan, but it won't let me lift it up. Okay, the, a solid is actually created from uh, a number of regions. So here we would have six regions. So the, the sub object of a solid is a region. Let's just hover the mouse over the object and that will show you that. Okay, it should appear as a solid if I hover. <laughs> it's refusing to do it just now. Okay, let's explode it though. So X, return. Pick the object and return. And <laughs> my, my tips aren't showing up here. It should be telling me that this is a region. So if I list that shape, you can see that it's a region type object and that's just the shape of it and tell me that it's at height of 3000 okay regions you know are basically individual flat faces the region has to be flat with itself it's kind of co all its corners are coplanar okay if you explode again you get just lines Right, now we'll not do any more of the, the, the solids commands here because they're, they're, they're too varied. So we'll open another file that's been set up to show you some of the, some of the features of, of solid modeling. <clears throat> so I open and look for the file called booleans.dwg. Okay, and there's three little exercises in here for us to work through. Let's tip this over into, into 3D view. Now this is this setup has been done quite carefully. How these shapes got into this position is the, the subject of another exercise altogether. So, you know, to do that you need control of the UCS axes. Now we'll not cover that in this one. Okay, we'll just play with the solids just so you get get the hang of it. Okay, so firstly we'll extrude this larger pink rectangle and we'll take it to the height of this one. So I don't have to know any numbers here. So extrude, so it's EXT, return. Pick the pink shape and return. And let your object snaps find the corner of the pink shape. So it's going to take only the Z height from that shape. Okay, so we should have a solid lump. Right, now what we're going to do is carve away into that to form a parapet. So we'll extrude this pink shape downwards within the one that's there already. So the two shapes will be kind of in the same space. So let's have a look at this in X-ray. Okay, so we'll extrude, so EXT, return. Pick the pink line if you can. It's being a bit awkward, I think we'll have to do this in 2D wireframe. So EXT, return. Pick the pink shape, return, and we're going minus 1000. So we go into the other shape. You could extrude it 1000, then move it down by its own height. It's exactly the same job. Right, look at that in X ray now. You'll see that there's a slightly darker gray here, <clears throat> slightly stronger gray, in that so the two, two volumes are kind of within each other. And what we'll do, we'll take the small shape from the big one. 
And you do that using these commands here. These are Boolean operations. And we'll use the one in the middle, the subtract command. You pick the, the big shape first, the one you want to take the things from. So pick that one and return. Then pick the smaller shape and return. And it carves away to form a parapet, like a little rooftop pool. Have a look at that in shaded with edges. And you see what it's done, a bit clearer. Okay. Right. Back to 2D wireframe. <clears throat> and what we'll do is we'll we'll mirror this shape over to this side and we're going to form an, an intersecting vault. Okay, so if we mirror the shape first, so MI return, pick the yellow shape and return and use the diagonal across the base of the, the shape as your mirror line. Go from corner to corner and return. And let's extrude these both by the same depth. We just want, they need to be big enough to go right the way through the object. So we'll exaggerate that a wee bit. So EXT return. You can do both at the same time. Return. And we'll set a extrusion of minus 11,000. Okay. So they're plenty big enough to go through the object. Now, at some point there, I didn't notice it disappear, but my navigation bar is gone. It just freaked out and just disappeared. That sometimes happens. Now to bring it back, if you rem try and remember this routine, because it is a bit awkward when it does disappear, you could type in the orbit command and you'd be okay, but if you type in navbar, it half, half write the command, then we've got navbar display. At the moment, the computer thinks the navigation bar is still there, but it's actually not. So if you use a zero to say, definitely go away, so zero and return, then return to bring back the command, and then one to bring back the navigation bar. So zero is off, one is on. Got my navigation bar back. It freaks out sometimes, not sure what causes it, but it goes. Okay, so you can see our two volts there. Now, you could join those together if you wanted to. So if you wanted that as the actual shape, you can use the union command. So the solid union will join the two solids together. So just pick both of these and watch for what happens here. Things get a bit tidier in this junction. Okay, see how they're both going through each other. You know, if one's a different shape to the other, that wouldn't matter. And now we can take this cross shape from the main lump to give us our vaulted roof. So subtract from the big shape, return, then pick your subtracting shape and return again. Now, you know, instantly people can see the, the kind of power and, you know, simplicity and all the advantages that that kind of modeling is going to give them. It's, it's a great little set of commands. Okay. What we've got here is a pale, this pale blue shape is a profile of a cornice and I want this to, to go around the building. So I'm going to use an extrude command but slightly cleverer. So we'll extrude along a path so that it follows the green line. If we just use a normal extrude command it would just go in this direction, either forwards or backwards in that direction. The objects always extrude in the, in the plane that they are kind of normal to. So try the command EXT return, pick the pale blue shape and return and you see it's going to let me extrude it but it won't go around the corner unless I specify a path and that's one of the options in the command, you can see it here, path. So type in the letter P and return, pick the green line and as long as everything's modelable it will do the command. Now that worked fine because the, the polyline was good and so was the profile. The profile was closed. has to be a closed polyline with no overlaps, no gaps. Okay, what we could do there to tidy things up even more is join the cornice to the main mass. If you wanted to eventually have that a different material then you, you shouldn't do this but we could at the moment. So union, pick both the objects 
press return and you see there that a gap appeared in that line indicating that it's now unified so pretty useful let's move on to the next shape and we'll tilt over a bit more okay and what I've got here is three closed polylines a rectangle a circle and a blobby type shape this is this will be you know something perhaps that's the shape of a swimming pool and this is the tiled area around it we could turn that into a surface very easily using the region command so if you type reg short for region and pick all three objects and return notice they all go white they take the uh, the, the layer that's current Let's shade that so we can see what's happening and we've got the three shapes basically sitting inside the same space. Okay, so I've got a shape there, a shape there, and this one. Now, regions, as long as they're coplanar and they're exactly in the same plane, they can be subtracted. So if you get the subtract command, pick the main shape and return, and then the two smaller shapes. It's uh, been a bit awkward here, I'll try that again. Subtract from this, return, I'm trying to pick, oh it's been awkward, I think I'll have to do this 2D wireframe, it's just my graphics cards freaking out a wee bit. Okay, try that again, subtract from this shape, return, pick the two, two interior shapes. Everything looks the same at the moment until you shade it. Okay, so that's a region. The little flicker there, you notice the triangulation just when I changed view. Now that could be extruded now. Regions can be turned into solids quite readily. I'm just going to drop back a few clicks here, just show you another feature of the software that's that's arrived with the 2012 version, and that's called push pull modeling. Um, I can't really see myself using it too much, but it's there, and it's good to know that you can do it. So, if, okay, go press pull, it's called. Okay, and watch what happens with the cursor. It's, it's, it's highlighting the different shapes that could be brought up. So if I go, if I leave my cursor hanging in here in this, the, the gap between the shapes, you see how it's creating the solid in that manner. So I'll, I'll just drag that up, and you can still get access to the original shapes that's probably one of the advantages in this one when you use the normal extrude command uh, it actually absorbs the shape so I've still got the shapes here that I can I can actually use so I'll try and get the circle there okay so it's fairly crude but you know it's it's pretty quick and you know it's like using the thickness command but you, you're actually actually lidding the objects whereas the thickness command doesn't Okay, let's have a look at the third little part of the exercise here. And what I've got is some circles and a closed polyline here. And so this is representing a wall, and these are the shapes of columns. So let's extrude all these columns in the wall by the same amount. So let's grab the whole lot and return. And we'll do them a height of 8,000. Okay, nice and high. Right. Now I've got a layer switched off that's got the shape of the roof. Okay, so if I bring that layer back on, see I've got a roof layer. Okay, there's the shape of the roof. Let's do it from this side so you can see it. And I'm going to extrude that roof through all those columns. So EXT, return, pick the roof pile, roof profile, I should say, and return. And thickness for this is minus nine five zero zero. Should have been positive nine five zero zero. So let's do that again. So ext return, pick the roof, and return nine five zero zero. Okay, so it's clashing through all those objects. And for a nice clean model, really, I want to have these columns finishing on the underside of that roof not going right the way through it and not being short of the roof. I want everything to be tidy. And because of that awkward shape of the roof, 
all the columns are different heights and you know within each column it's different heights as well so what I can do is I can subtract from the columns in the wall I can subtract the roof shape but when I do that I will lose the original roof so I need to copy it first so CP return pick the roof and return now just look for a handy corner somewhere on the model this will do pretend to go from here pull away but come back to the same place return again you've got two roofs there in the same space now you can try your subtract command so we're subtracting from all of these return pick the roof and return nothing much looks like it's changed when you're in the shaded view go back to 2d wireframe and you'll see that there's gaps through all the objects now if you use the separate command which is on the solid editing panel there separate click on the columns and return twice we've now got individual columns top and bottom of, above and below the roof all the stuff at the top can be deleted and we've got a nice clean clean model it's like a canopy or whatever it could be okay final touch here let's cut some holes in the roof I've got a layer switched off called the roof lights okay I've got ellipses drawn on the floor of the building and I've got paths for each of the ellipses so that they so that they go through the roof so they're long enough to go right the way through the roof so we'll end up with three roof lights that are the base shape on the ground is the same but they'll have a different cut through the through the roof so you want to extrude these individually so ext return pick an ellipse return then p return and pick the path for that one to go through okay do the same with the other two so extrude the ellipse return p return pick the corresponding path the last one select your put your ellipse return the P return and then your path okay so it looks a wee bit bizarre at the moment a bit like a kind of chimneys on a, an ocean liner or something okay quite funky in their own right some kind of expo building okay then do the subtraction so you pick your roof shape and return and then your three chimneys get chopped right the way through it lovely and easy okay so because of the angle the shapes are changing and because of the slope that affects that as well so as you can see booleans extremely useful modeling editing tools okay we the one we didn't cover there was the intersection and this is the resulting shape of two or two solids that are joined together let's just quickly open the uh, the booleans one again just to show you that one so I'll close that don't see the changes I'll reopen the booleans file and let's just quickly look at this one again let's flip it over so we'll mirror the yellow object and we'll extrude it and let's go 10,000 this time that's what I should have done last time wrong way minus 10,000 okay and then if we did the intersect of these two shapes instead we get the shape that would have been part of the subtraction so you know quite a complex shape in its own right extremely useful commands and really do improve the speed of your modeling thanks